Welcome everyone to Luke Live Online, session number eight. I'm Father James DeLucio with the Paulist Fathers, ready, willing, and able to share with you the Gospel of Luke in what actually I should think are the most popular verses, the most often recited and proclaimed, well known throughout Christendom and far beyond for these are the verses that refer to the birth of Jesus. I have some reflection questions for you uh, at the end of this session, plus some links to some songs that I sing in commemoration of the birth of Jesus and some additional discussion questions on my blog. So this is the New American Revised Version that's most popular in the Catholic Church. It's used at all of our masses in the scripture passages condensed and combined in our lectionary. Here we go. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And so they all went each to his own town to be enrolled. And Joseph too went up from his own town of Galilee called Nazareth to a town of Judah called Bethlehem, the city of David because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to have her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, she wrapped the infant in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. There was no room for them in the inn. Now that perhaps even more than all the passages, all the verses that you just heard is quoted by almost everybody, no matter their ethnicity, no matter their faith, no room at the inn for the birth of the Messiah. But who hasn't experienced that sense that there's no room in the inn when we feel rejected, dejected, when there's not a place for us at the table? whether it's the table of invited guests and we're unwelcomed, or there's no room for us at the table of discussion, there's no room for input. It's a powerful and a powerful gift that our Messiah chose to come into the world this way, for it's of universal appeal. And it's also an assurance that we're not alone when we feel there's no room in the inn for us. It's also good to invite people to conversation, to simply ask them, when have you last used no room at the inn? Was it in jest? Was it in seriousness? Or when did you last feel that, or overcome or overwhelmed that there was no room in the inn for you? Now it's unusual, I should say, that people wouldn't have a response to that right away. But what's also often good in wanting to introduce a discussion about faith is to find analogous phrases and a different vocabulary for the same thing. Perhaps as much as, um, or almost as much as, at least in these United States, almost everyone has seen at least once, if not dozens of times, the 1939 MGM film, The Wizard of Oz. And if we think near, as we're nearing the end of the story when Dorothy and her friends, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Lion are in the presence of the now exposed 
uh, wizard, who's not really a great wizard at all, the great humbug, um, he does actually empower the scarecrow, the tin man, and the lion with images and symbols of all that they desired. Knowledge, wisdom, heart, compassion, and courage. But when it's time for Dorothy, she has this powerful, she makes this powerful statement. I don't think there's anything in that black bag for me. And there we have no room at the inn in just a different context and situation, but a powerful kind of goosebump inducing reality that also ties us in to those same feelings of there's nothing left for us. There's something for everyone, but there's nothing left for us. And let's even think on sort of normal growing up experiences. Who hasn't at times frustrated with our parents or our older siblings that we haven't had the fantasy that, well, maybe we were adopted. <laughs> maybe we don't belong here. And in those cases, of course, we don't want to belong <laughs> there. But it's still a sense of not fitting in, of, of, of not belonging, even if it's our own willfulness or disappointment. So that's what I invite us to explore and discuss. And if we are feeling at this moment, in this day, in this pandemic, that there's no room in the end for us. How may we allow our faith and the reality of Jesus' story of his very birth, having a sense of rejection and making do uh, with the lowly estate, that same ongoing gospel theme of humility, everyone being called down to earth. We've already explored that quite a bit with the great reversal of God's kingdom, reversing all the inequalities, all the uh, injustices, unfairness of the world to bring people down to a common humanity. And how more common can we have than birth? The beautiful, the exciting, the hope-filled dynamics of coming into the world and also its dangers its frailties and vulnerabilities, they're all here. They're all here, and they're emphasized with that little phrase, there's no room at the inn. But we'll look at that more fully next week when we see the second half of the Birth of Jesus narrative. Please look at the comments below, and you'll see a link to my song meditation on No Room at the Inn and the Birth of Jesus and also a link to additional thoughts and questions for conversation. Thank you so much for joining me. My apologies for today's delay. I hope that you still waited and tuned in. Have a wonderful week. God bless you. Continue to converse with the scriptures, for we're called to do that. And wear your masks. God bless. Bye, everyone.